If you find pivot tables a bit daunting, then tables are a great alternative because they can also be filtered with slices to create an interactive report. And with the right functions, you can aggregate the data while ignoring the rows that are filtered by the slicer. Let's take a look. Here I have some sales data by segment, country, product, and date. It's already formatted in an Excel table. And on the contextual table design tab of the ribbon, you can see the table name is financials. Now, if your data isn't already formatted in an Excel table, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control T to convert it. Now, there are about 700 rows of data, which is way too much to make sense of just by looking at the table. I'll make some space at the top to insert some slices. And with the table selected, on the table design tab of the ribbon, I can insert a slicer. Here, I can choose the columns I want slices for. These are the columns that I want to filter. I'll have segment, country, product, and month. Now, with one already selected, I can Control A to select them all and move them to the top of my table. Let's reduce the height and width so they fit in the space available. I'll move the month slicer to the edge of the table header space, and I'll set this slicer to two columns. Then holding Shift, I'll select the product slicer and reduce the height of the buttons so they fit without the scroll bar. And Control-A again to select them all. And on the slicer tab under Align, I can distribute them horizontally and align to the top. So while I have them all selected, I'm gonna change the color to match my table. So from the slicer styles drop down, okay, that's formatting done. As I select items in the slicer, the table filters accordingly. For example, if I want to see January sales for Amarilla, you can see there are five results. And notice the slicer button formats change to indicate when there's no data for an item, for example, the segment slicer has channel partners, mid-market, and small business in a light shade of blue. And we can see in the table that those segments are not present. As you select more items, the table's further filtered, that is, slicers are additive. Also notice the row numbers in the table are blue to indicate these rows are part of a filtered data set. I can clear the slicer filters one by one by clicking on the clear filters button in the top of the slicer, or on the data tab, I'll select a cell in the table and then clear all filters. I actually have this button on my quick access toolbar because I use it all the time. You can right click to add it. It's grayed out for me because I already have added it. Now, one of the limitations of slices for tables are date slices. Unlike pivot tables that can group dates into months and years, tables don't. And the timeline slicer that works for pivot tables doesn't work for tables. This is why I've added columns to my table for month and year. Alternatively, you could add a column for the year and month together. For example, I can use the text function to take the date and format it yyyy-mm. The table automatically includes this new column in its range. Let's rename it year month. And I can insert a slicer for this new field. Notice it's automatically sorted in ascending order. One of the great features of pivot tables is the way they automatically summarize the data to get totals, counts, averages, etc. Let's look at how we can do this with tables. Here I have two slicers for country and segment, and I've turned off the slicer header to save space. Check out my slicer formatting video linked to here for more tips. I'll filter the table for Canada and small business, just so it has less rows. On the table design tab, I can add a row total and choose an aggregation type from the drop-down. Let's leave it at sum. Now, if you look in the formula bar, you can see it has inserted the subtotal function. Subtotal ignores rows hidden by filters, so you can change selections in the slices and it automatically updates, which is cool. However, having the totals at the bottom of the table is a bit inconvenient. Instead, I can use the subtotal function at the top outside of the table. For example, here, let's get the total sales equals subtotal. The first argument is the aggregation type that you want. Numbers 1 through 11 include values on hidden rows, and numbers 101 through to 111 ignore values on hidden rows. Now, rows hidden as a result of filters, like I'm using here, are ignored with either set of function numbers. So we're only talking about rows that are hidden manually with the right click hide rows. So I'm going to choose 9 for sum 
and I'm going to sum the sales column. And now my total is at the top of the table. I can happily change the slicer selections and the formula updates accordingly. Shout out to John von der Hayden for this tip. Thanks, John. Another function we can use that allows us to choose whether to ignore filtered rows or not is the newer aggregate function. I say newer, but it's been around since Excel 2010. Let's say I'd also like to see the average sales. We'll use aggregate. And as you can see, it has even more options to choose from. I'll go with one for average. And then the next argument lets me specify what to ignore. It's the opposite of how subtotal works. That is, you have to specify if you want to ignore filtered rows. And any rows hidden manually are always ignored. I want to ignore hidden rows, so I'll choose one, which also ignores other subtotal and aggregate formulas in the table. Not that I have any, but just in case someone changes something in the future, this is gonna prevent them double counting it. Let's move the tooltip out of the way and select the sales. And selecting items in the slices feeds through to the formula result. Pretty cool. One of the limitations of slices for tables is they can only filter one table. Unlike pivot tables, you can't connect them to multiple tables at the same time. The other challenge with slices is they take up a lot of space. So check out this video on how to format slices and make them small next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.